Hey everybody, it's Lance Dawson. I am back along with my co-host, Andrew Stewart, for yet another episode of Backstage Lowdown. Today, we have iconic Canadian TV personality, uh, I guess radio personality and video personality, Rick Campanelli. If you were a teenager growing up in the 80s, you were very much a part of much music and the VJ scene. He has been a reporter on ET Canada. He hosted Deal or No Deal, the Canadian version. Uh, and we're really happy to have him today. We have him for a very short period of time. So Andrew and I are going to keep this moving, but uh, uh, we're excited to have Rick on board. So here we go. I planned a Thanksgiving weekend camping trip for my entire family. And you know, that starts in May, right? Cause you got to get your spots and everything. Right. Yeah. Always so excited. Like the second weekend or first, first, second weekend of October is always stunning. And I don't even care if it's cold. If it's cold, that's great. But um, yeah, it's going to rain. Like all the <laughs> weather reports are saying it is going to rain at least is. two of the three days. And it's it's great to be cold. It's not great to be cold and wet. So we're we're pivoting, and I'm trying to be a team player that is happy about the pivot, and it'll be great. It will be fine. Did you hear that um, up on the 400 that there was a truck full of celery that uh, that went flying all over the highway? I did. I saw it on the news last night. Yeah, that's a little I mean, crazy. Yeah. I mean, it really it cuts out the middleman being me. I no longer have to put it in my fridge let it sit right. for a few weeks, take out, put it into the compost. Now it's just going truck to road, truck yeah. to compost. Truck to compost. You really got to take stock of what's going on up there. <laughs> oh, that's nasty. I know. I know. Hey, man, you caught me off guard with the whole celery <laughs> crisis. I don't... Didn't it they is, always, don't they always say that is, that's like It a... is going to be a crisis. It is going to be a crisis. I'm don't sure prices will um... go up. Nobody's no. getting their celery this Thanksgiving. Easy, man. It was one load of celery. But it's supposed to be like a negative calorie type of food because it takes more calories to eat it than you actually get out of a stock of celery. Does it? Yeah. I really sure. I really haven't put much research into my consumption and digestion of celery. I don't think you are spending your time wisely, my friend. No. I feel no. like, you know, I'm, I'm reading I'm celery not. stats all the time. Yeah. Just in case, just in case, like my, you know, there's a lot of pressure to come home and be interesting. And so I've already, I've always got my celery stats. That's ready. ready to go. Just, Hey, Correct. I'm, I'm going to be having a conversation with Rick Campanelli uh, today. I better have those celery stats ready to go. This <laughs> you might, you yeah, might want to talk about celery. This might explain why we have nine listeners. Probably. I'm going to tell you a little secret. One year for my birthday, my wife, I don't really, like, cards are great, but they're, you know, they can be expensive and no one keeps cards, you know, so no. I always think oh, they're a bit of a waste. But anyway, um, my wife went out to get me a birthday card and thought, ah, you know, I've given this guy enough cards. So she memorized a card <laughs> and came home and told and it to me. And it, it started up, husband. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> like, what are you odd. doing? I just said, I memorized the card. I'm just this is what you're getting. To you. <laughs> this is it. It's like a video card, only I'm right here. This is, this yeah. is it. Oh. I mean, she could have taken the photo of the card and at least sent that to you. But I mean, that, that's Too fine. Much. I actually know somebody um, that her and her husband, they give each other the exact same card every year. Like, the actual card it switches back oh, and forth they keep the card right write the other person's name on it hand it back to them uh come the anniversary nice. of whatever it, it might be that's so, pretty cool i mean yeah exactly so you're only buying two cards one from each and uh just keep on using them for years wow i on the other hand do not use cards <laughs> no <laughs> because you guys i know big... somebody's gonna yeah. throw it out i mean why right or, or recycle it yes yeah, because that, that's what we do now. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm 
pretty uh, anal about that. I got to make sure that I stay on top of my, my family stays on top of their recycling, their composting. I like as little trash as possible. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. If anything's going to be trash, it's going to be me. <laughs> yeah, and cards are good that way. You know what? I'll, I'll tell you this. This is my thing about recycling. I think the, here's where we get canceled. I think the dairy industry in Canada might be akin to the mafia because I'm not sure how we, no, seriously, bear with I, me for a second. I'd like to see I where don't this is know, going. Well, beyond the price of shredded cheese, which is like way cheaper in the States and then you get here and it's like, you know, 10 bucks. Um, how is it that everywhere else we've done this massive campaign to eradicate the plastic bag out of our society and there's the good old dairy product, three bags of milk, milk uh, ensconced, wrapped up in yet another plastic bag here we go. Four plastic bags. Meanwhile, every other country in the whole universe, plastic junk, jug. recyclable, reusable. Plastic there you jug. go. Boom. What's happening? I don't know. And I might even go so far as to say that might only be in, in Ontario. Sometimes I extrapolate and say, oh, this is like Canada wide when I'm not really sure about that. It might just be the Ontario dairy farmers. Because if you went to Alberta, I don't I, know they what. probably, or certainly BC, they're probably just, they're jugs, right? They're, they're jugging it. <laughs> they're jugging <laughs> they got nice jugs yeah i'm not saying <laughs> alberta do you have nice you jugs? know it's not fair because i know you do the editing of this program so i know that you always <laughs> take out all your stuff right leave all the stuff that i say <laughs> you, in. you know what if uh right if you wanted to start editing um then yeah you could put my yeah. stuff in <laughs> yeah i do i want to i want to put your stuff in that's exactly uh, right. Uh, yes. Awesome. Uh, right. Yeah. Be... <laughs> what a ridiculous person you are. Uh, so I actually, I went out and bought two bags of milk, which means there's three bags in each one. That's six, seven, eight bags, empty bags that I'm going to have at the end of this. Yeah. It's all, it's all going to go into the recycling. And I don't know if they recycle all of it and how. I bet you not. Used, but I, at least it, I, I actually right. washed the bags, put it in the recycling and away it goes. But, wow. Yeah. That, wash those that, bags that, out that and put them bags. in. You don't wash the bag? I'm impressed. I'm, I'm just, impressed. no, I just admit defeat. But I, I think that that's, that's good. I just really do question about, you know, because I always say, well, there's a certain percentage of the stuff that we think we're recycling. It's not. It's just hitting the landfill, right? Dude, so. you got to wash your bag. Okay. I will. I just want to buy a jug of milk. I don't want to buy this whole <laughs> bag system anymore. Well, you're gonna not have to, to mention that everybody had to buy a plastic pitcher, right? Now we all have that plastic pitcher. Yes. So, and if you're a chocolate milk, sorry, if you're a chocolate milk drinker, you have to have one for your white milk and one for your chocolate milk. Travesty. It really is. Yeah, I don't know. We should have a telethon. There's got to be. So, yeah, definitely. <laughs> Well, is this if, what if they call first else, world problems? If nothing else, wash your bag, people. Wash your wash your bag, people. What are bag well, not, people? Not not the people. Well, why do they need to be washed? What's wrong with you? Well, they anyway. you want them to be clean when they're washing your bag. It distracts. Hey! Yeah, guys, dude, I'm so sorry, Rick. Uh, <laughs> ah, there I he just, is, Andrew. I just sent you an email. I okay. I thought 11:30 in my mind for some reason. I, I'm so sorry, guys. That's, not that's a problem, okay. Man. Uh, <laughs> hey, Rick, I'm Lance. It's nice to meet Lance. you. Yeah, and nice I'm to Andrew. Meet you, Lance. Nice to it meet you. It actually worked out well. My camera went down on me and I had to switch up cameras. Well, okay. He, well, Lance and I have been sitting here chatting. So, okay, Andrew. Great. Like okay. Five minutes to switch out a camera anyway. This is good. I know we have you for a very short period of time and you're probably doing a lot of press for the, the 299 Queen movie. So, uh, we've got you. Let's, yeah. we'll, we'll take a few minutes, but I really yeah. do want to thank you for, for taking time out. I know oh, you've got a whole list of things and whatever made you decide to expand your exposure by nine listeners. Good, good on you, man. Here you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, man. I just love talking about the good old days, man. So, whenever, Whenever there's someone that reaches out to me asking if we could, you know, go down memory lane and chat, I, I'm, I'm not going to say no to anybody, man. I, I, I love talking about it. It was a big part of my life back then. So, yeah. uh, well, no, yeah, that's, that's guys, awesome. But I do apologize. My bad. I, I, uh, that's I've okay. been getting times wrong along the way. Uh, there's been a number <laughs> of these and, and I, and I actually missed a couple. Uh, we've been doing these for like a couple months now. And, and yeah, I, right. out of all of them, I missed two. So. It's not, That's it's not, not too bad. 
not as bad as you know coming a little joining a little late you know I, i'll I, take I, that yeah. missing them all together so yeah fair My enough pleasure. we uh so we all grew up in in like being teenagers anyway in the 80s yeah. uh i think yeah. you're a couple years younger than me and maybe four years younger than andrew um but that was just a fantastic time so uh, uh we're excited it? excited to have you so I, yeah. I'm gonna ask. I'm gonna start off with the softball question, but one I'm sure you've been asked, um, and I guess maybe it's maybe it's for younger listeners that just don't get it because they've sort of been born with all this technology. Yeah. But it right. must have been incredible being this young guy, you know, yeah. and uh, Brock University physical education degree, and now he's in the limelight. And on the cusp of like, people are like, what, what's a music video? I mean, I get when a, a record drops, but what's a yeah. music video? And now yeah. like, so in a nutshell, what was that like? It was, uh, it was another world. It really was like, I loved music. I, I, I knew everything it seemed back then about music. Uh, I was so passionate about it. Um, my thumb was really on the pulse of what was going on in music, all genres. Uh, because I was so into it. And I had three right. older siblings and parents that that played music everywhere we were nonstop, whether it was in our car, going to soccer games or in our house, in the kitchen, you know, uh, in the shower, wherever we were, there was always music going. So I have to thank them, uh, first of all, for turning me uh, onto bands like The Who and The Stones, The Beatles, of course, uh, uh and then David Bowie, The Doors, all these amazing acts and artists that I'm sure you guys know all about. Um, but that was my first the introduction. Who? The Doors? Wonderful. Who? Yeah. yeah. Who? What are you? <laughs> don't, I know. you don't have to address Andrew, Rick, if you don't, <laughs> if you don't want to. Anyway. But, um, yeah, but yeah. then to be thwarted into the, like you said, Lance, this to say, it was like the limelight because all cameras are on you. All the whole nation is listening to your every word, you know, hoping that you get to the music video a little quicker. But we had VJ breaks and throws. But yeah, I, I definitely wasn't used to that world. Uh, I knew my music, but I wasn't used to television and being in front of a camera. So I was so nervous. I was so uncomfortable. I, I lacked confidence. Uh, but but I knew the music, and that was my saving grace. And I I think. Denise and all the other much music brass that that called the shots they they saw that in me and they knew I was gonna get there one day um I, I was gonna get as you know as as great as Steve Anthony was or as perfect as Erica M turned out to be you know I think they saw that in all of us they just gave us time these days you, you could be at a place for one or two weeks and if they don't see any performance or production out of you it's like they don't have faith in you they don't trust you for the these interviews they don't trust so you get you get you they get rid of you so but back then in the mid 90s it was a different ball game it was a different world and they saw something in the vjs that they had worked so hard at sculpting i guess and, and making sure they were ready for on camera uh but it was it was a different world for me because because i, I was going to be a teacher like my older siblings, but in a way I was sort of teaching the viewers that would tune in about music, which was right up my alley of, For you sure. know, wanting to go and follow in the footsteps of my older siblings. I was teaching right. in a way, introducing sure. them to new music, in introducing them to new artists and, and new video directors. And, uh, and I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Well, you definitely had some innate ability and, and, you know, I think a lot of times when, when we, any of us do something and we always feel like, well, I'm not confident. I hope no one can see. Oh, and that's, yeah. that's often the case, right? So you didn't come across on ca camera that you weren't feeling confident and it's, it's, you're right. Well, what do you think about it being, um, a, a, just a new world? Because I, I marvel at that. I, I came up sort of in the same era that you did uh, yeah. on the musician side and yeah. it was a different world. People allowed you time to get better time to develop Oh. Uh, as a musician or a songwriter, as an artist. Yeah. And now it's like, if you're not good out of the gate and, and, and there's a whole good tsunami, luck. right. Of, yeah. of people that are doing it. Um, yeah. What's your take on, on well, where sort of the music industry is now? Like you've seen it evolve from, from where you were. I was never an expert in the industry. I never was like, that was yeah. for the record label reps. That was for the bands, the artists. I, 
yeah. I was in a band back in high school, which didn't last yeah. long because I couldn't hit those you know, those high Bono uh, lyrics on s- certain songs yeah. that they wanted us to perform. <laughs> yeah. But, but well, no, but I, I mean, like with respect to so nowadays, like the the videos. I mean, I think there's still music videos happening. But a lot of times it's more like, hey, I can see last night's Springsteen concert because it's on YouTube now. Right. Like within right. hours. Yeah. Everything's so easily accessible these days. You know, videos, live concerts, TV shows, anything. We got our device and we Google this, we we punch in that and there it is. But yeah, back in the day, it was a much simpler time. We weren't as overwhelmed. You know, every which, you know, every direction we weren't getting thrown things at you know um it was just one avenue we were following and and you're right it was there was something special about and you guys know too there was something special about you know waiting a few hours to see a music video that i really wanted to see and if much music was having its galactic premiere at 3 p.m well getting up that morning and if i knew a chili peppers video was having its premiere debut this is the first time the world is going to see it well there was an excitement behind that and right. uh, and I love that as a music fan, and I'm sure all of us music fans loved that. But that's that's that was a different time, and we'll never see that. And we'll never get to experience anything close to that ever again. You know, like you said, like these days, if you can't get the job done, well, there's hundreds of people behind you waiting to get that and take that opportunity and run with it. Back then, sure, I'm sure there were a lot of people that wanted to be, be a VJ. I, I, I lucked out at you know, getting a foot in the door, winning a contest. But the difference is, yes, they stuck with you. If they saw something in you, they stuck with you and they helped, you know, create this VJ and this personality and um, they didn't give up on you, which was great. I think it started because we were already in the family. Like I was there a year and a half before they put me on air. I know Erica was there for quite a bit too, answering phones before they put her on air. So the people like the, the the people that made the decisions, they they saw us and they got a they saw us on a daily basis and we interacted with them. And 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 that's the, that's the beauty of it. Like they 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 trusted us uh, and, and they had faith in us. And and I'm, I'm talking to Denise Donlin and Moses Neimer here. Those right, are the, the right. two that had the bot that had the last say in whether or not I went on air for, for yeah. the nation's music station. So, yeah, I just I, I, I'll. I'll never forget those two and what they did for me. Um, you know, taking it, taking a shot at a, a nobody kid from from Hamilton that was going to teach kids how to kick a soccer ball <laughs> for the rest of his life. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I even Denise the other night, like I got to spend some time with her after so many years of not seeing her, and um, still to this day, I'm thank, I'm thanking her. I'm, I, I'm nervous when I get around her because she, <laughs> she's Donlin, right? So. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's a special time. Were you able to stay relatively tight with that crew? I mean, you all experienced something pretty yeah. unique. So do you still, yeah. you know, see uh, Steve Anthony or Eric M? Or like, how does that? Yeah, I, I see Steve and Erica the most and Michael Williams. Uh, I've, I've grown yeah. to have a nice friendship with him over the last few months, thanks to this documentary. But uh, I was always keeping in touch with Brad, who's in New York, or Rachel, who's in L.A. Amanda's in L.A. as well. I know Bill's doing his thing out in Kingston. Those are the ones that I was really tight with on air with because the older ones that came before me, I didn't really have a relationship with them other than watching them after school every day on Much Music when I would come home from school. So I didn't really have a friendship or a relationship with them until uh, it was years after, um, especially Erica. Like I, I met Erica on one of my first days as a temp in 94 and it wasn't the 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 nicest run in with her because I was sitting in her chair at her desk and she <laughs> came in late trying to get ready for something and um yeah I still she she doesn't remember this story but um of course me <laughs> you the kid, do. I kind of I I don't remember all the details but I I I remember how it went down and it wasn't a positive uh, experience <laughs> but we joke about it now mm. and, and erica and i have become very close erica's the the, the sweetest the sweetest person you, you'll ever meet and monica the same way uh Sukin lee the same way they're all such great people and um right. thanks to this documentary we've all been you know rekindling our relationships and uh getting closer and closer 
Nice. Well, you had a 12 year run after that with uh, ET Canada. So that must have kept you in touch with, well, not only your, your old colleagues, but then certainly right. new Canadian artists and stars, yeah, which, like, which yeah. you were great on. I'm sorry that that whole thing kind of oh, wound man. up, right? Yeah. Thank you, Lance, for the nice words. That show comes to an end this week. Its last show yeah. is on Friday, as you know now. Um, and, and the cool thing about that, you know, w- once you're in a family like that and you build these strong bonds for life, um, the producers called me up uh, because the executive producer at ET Canada was my old producer at Much Music or one of them. Right. So he's calling the shots now. They've, they've asked me to be part of the last show. So we're going to be going into Toronto to tape the last show for ET Canada after 18 seasons. That's and cool. uh we're gonna take we're gonna take many trips down memory lane and talk about the good old days and uh, yeah you know what everything's temporary not nothing nothing lasts forever but but it was it was very special to me to be part of those two 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 brands and uh, you're right I was at I was at ET Canada longer than I was at much music which is hard to believe but uh, yeah. yeah craziness so what was it like for you at the time that you left much music. When you mm. walked out those doors and then juxtapose that against what your feelings are now after this film is being made ab- mm. about much music. You know, I really didn't want to leave. Um, but you, you have a shelf life when you're a much music VJ. Yeah, for sure. When you're starting to get older, when you're not making that same connection with the young ones that are tuning in, you know, it's time to find a fresh face. Plus I was starting to have a, a family of my own. I was having a, a child and like what VJ has kids, you know, back then. But I think T had a couple kids at the time when I started having kids, but, but it just goes to show you it, it was a young person's game and, and we see the way it went. It turned into a, a, a the, the whole crew and cast at much music. They were, I don't think anyone was older than 28 uh, when I left. It was a young, young teen. So it was hard. I sort of got, you know, it, it sort of, it, a combination of me getting older and, and and my time had come to an end and um and me wanting to leave too because it wasn't the same place that i was used to i i i, I signed up for music and music videos talking to talking about music nonstop. now now much music had turned into more of like a pop culture reality show place right. you know now we're airing Ren and Stimpy or or Jersey Shore, these type shows that were becoming big on MTV. So much music was following in, the, in those footsteps. And that wasn't what I signed up for back in 1994. I, 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 you know, it was all about the music. So so I knew the writing was on the wall in terms of it changing its programming and the content was t- totally different. You know, towards the end, I was doing more and more contests and promotions for, you know, and it was less and less about the nitty gritty of the music and the videos and the artists. So, yeah, yeah but 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 stepping into a, a role like a co-host of ET Canada. Now, this is a totally different world that I'm used to because now I'm wearing suits and I'm wearing expensive Italian leather shoes and I can't wear hats to the side anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and I, need to, I need to get a haircut. And it's like, they send me to like vocal training school in Los Angeles, the school of Mary Hart and Mark Steinis and John Tesh. And it's like, they're sort of changing me to become this guy over here where I'd been this guy over here for 11 years or nine and a half years at much. So it was, a, it was a transition. It was a tough one, a challenging one for me because I found, I, I felt like, the, the person I was on MOD or combat zone or video flow, that wasn't me anymore in this ET Canada role. And it took time for me to get on that bike and grasp what they wanted from me. And I, I eventually got it. And, and, and I loved what I did at ET Canada. Um, Cause it didn't, it opened the door to, you know, now we're not just talking to musicians and artists. Now we're talking to like, you know, A-list celebrities, whether they're like athletes or actors or whoever they are. So, um, it was a bit of a transition for me going into that new job at ET Canada, but it was 12 amazing seasons that I will always cherish. That's interesting because yeah. I would have thought that because you've been in front of the camera for so long at much yeah. that yeah. it would have just been take a step to the right. I'm in front of a new camera and yeah, and well, let's, let's run. 
you know what it was? It was like those type shows, like the ET Canada's, the ETs, that was the granddaddy of them all. They are so polished and so perfect. And and at Much Music, if you remember, well, it was live and it was anything goes. And once it's out there, it's out there. You can't get it back. ET Canada was a 22 minute show daily that we started shooting in the studio at 1030 in the morning. So we could we could uh, we could um, make it nice, nice and polished and perfect. And and that's what the 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 top 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 dogs, I guess, down in L.A. wanted from ET Canada. They wanted it to right. be perfect, polished, no mistakes, no bloopers, nothing like that. And that's what much music was all about. Yeah, you know, I love a good blooper. Two, two totally different worlds. <laughs> But I, 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 eventually I was able to fit into that new ET Canada world. And uh, yeah, it, was, it just took me some time. That's <laughs> Well, if, if you're more comfortable with imperfection, you have landed on the right prod podcast. Yeah. Today. <laughs> uh, what's your take on, on sort of why ET Canada is going away? Because I, I mean, I know we, we have ET, but it was nice to have sort of a Canadian slant on it. It really Canadian was, voice. especially back in the day, Lance and Andrew, when we concentrated on up and coming Canadians. Like sure, right. we, we touched on the ones that the world knows, like the Celine Dion's and the, and the Shania Twain's and uh, the Brian Adams. Uh, but now we were touching upon artists and actors and people that Canadians didn't know anything about and are Canadian. So that's what I really missed about that show. The CanCon was up there in percentage wise i'm i'm talking maybe close to 50 percent of everything we did if not if not more was right. canadian so That's now fantastic. over the years you know that dwindled because crtc regulations changed along the way and now it's all coming to an end unfortunately and it's sad because um we we really delved into these canadians that were one day going to make a huge impact on the world of entertainment that maybe started out uh, out as as you know nobodies in a way, and and now they're known throughout the world, you know. So it's sad seeing that show come to an end. And 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 I liked the competition back in the day too, because there was E Talk, there was Star, there was ET Canada. You had like back in the early aughts, I guess you can say, you had a number of Canadian entertainment programs shows, uh, and it was a healthy competition because we're all under the same mandate of introducing Canadian talent to Canadians. And now right. I think the only one that's standing after this week is, is going to be eTalk. So they carry the torch and I hope that show lasts for a very, very long time because it's what Canada needs. We need to build up our star system every day of the week and not, you know, focus so much on the Taylor Swifts and all these other huge superstars that don't really need help from us up here we need to be building up <laughs> yeah. our other talented canadians so right. yeah well maybe it's opened the door for another another show or another venue yeah. and maybe it's not yeah. on tv maybe it's on streaming or, or what have well, you but that's the thing yeah. i heard too lance about et canada i was talking to one of the producers yesterday they're not even keeping the website not even keeping any of the digital social really? media is huge right now you'd think you would keep that arm yeah. of it all because right. much music, as you know, these days they're on, they're doing the TikTok thing, and they're big on social media. It's it's not our much music, but it's right. this new generation's much music. You would think ET Canada would follow in that same path, but uh, right. maybe it's the ET people in LA that made you know suggestions on you know if right. if it's if it's coming to an end, it's all coming to an end. So right. I don't know, I don't know th those details yet. Yeah, you know, no. That's Lance and I were talking earlier on, and maybe you can confirm this for us. So, this movie, two ninety nine Queen Street West. This this is Sean Menard's film. Yeah. And my understanding is is that he has actually believed in this film so much that to get financing, that he has put up his own home, he sold his home to use those dollars to to finance that film. Is that true? It's so true. It's so true, Andrew and Lance. Like Sean. The, it's been it's been a passion project of his, I think, since he was done with the Carter effect, which was 2017 ish in there. As soon as he's done one project, he, he gets ready for the next project. He's also told me about what he's working on currently. And I, I, I wish I could tell you guys, but it's, it's going to be amazing. But yeah, he put years and years into this. He put his life into it. He put his he, he got another second mortgage for his home to get the, the money to make a film like this. 
he he screened uh, what, did he tell me 4000 hours of archival footage wow. that was wow. in the much music library can you imagine doing something like that i'd give up after 4 hours never, never <laughs> 4, I'm tapping hours. Out. that's how passionate he was about turning this into a story uh, from the beginning its inception all the way until the dark days when it came to an end so well, um yeah this is a great Harry. story to tell like it yeah there's generations of us out there that much music was part of our lives oh, and yeah. to rekindle that spark that love uh, yeah. he's doing a, a wonderful thing by by yeah. making this documentary the nostalgia is at an all-time high if you see this movie you just get brought back to oh yeah I remember when Jay-Z came in with Kanye and Rihanna. Oh, I remember when Gwen and Tony and the guys in uh, No Doubt came in. It takes you right back because if you're like me, I watched it religiously. I, yeah. I could have told you everything that was going on on a daily basis before I even got into much music as a VJ. So those moments are captured in the film and, and, and it takes you right back to those days where yeah. it was actually happening live. Like it, it's such a beautiful film and he's done such a great job telling the story. Now you don't see us as, as VJs present day. It's just our narration, our voices. Right. All the footage that you see in the film is from years back. And, and I thought that was brilliant the way he did that. Um, and it makes you feel like, you know, you're on your couch again watching much music. It's, 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 He's done a beautiful thing. I don't. Th I don't know if you guys have seen the film yet, or if you're about to. But it's 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 a beautiful two hour uh, masterpiece right. in my yeah, mind. It's in theaters, right? Oh, uh, yeah, last minute for the premiere, and so we couldn't make it down for the premiere. Oh, I don't know what area you guys are in, but it's gonna be in Hamilton on November fourth. Oh, yeah, All right. Lance, We're about put that on the that. calendar. Waterloo. Yeah. You're Waterloo, so there you yep. go. That's probably the closest to you guys. And then we start the tour in Montreal uh, on the 17th of October, and we're going everywhere. We're going out east. We're going out west. Right across we're the country. 14 cities across the country, yeah. Wow. That, that's awesome. You know, it. I guess in essence, it wasn't that long ago. It just feels so long ago because the changes in technology oh. in the industry have been so profound and I wonder, like, whatever's happening today, I don't know that they'll. it'll be that, I don't know, that long. No, like, so I, I in 10 saying. years, the technology, will, I don't know. Do you know what I I'm saying? You, I know exactly, Lance. I, will, things, will, it, 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 will things that are going on today be a significant 20, 30 years down the road? Well, that's, right. I think so. Because we're, we're bombarded on a daily basis, on an hourly yeah. basis with everything coming, flying at us in every direction. So what was happening at Much Music back in 84 when it was first launched on air up until the latter days, it was a magical, it was a magical time yeah. that it seems everybody wanted to be a part of. So well, and we allowed we allowed everybody time, like you were alluding to at the beginning, not just for you guys to develop, but we allowed time for a relationship to start happening. Way, like, yeah. hey, it's Rick Campanelli. I got to catch his hour at much at, on much yeah. music, or it's Steve yeah. Anthony, whoever you related to. Yeah, and then the same could be said for ET Canada. Those familiar faces every night, um, you know, sort of like watching the evening news that you related to. Yeah. Now yeah. and 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 the bands you you just mentioned that were coming in and you're you're promoting. They were allowed to develop. No doubt's been around. They were allowed to have a career. Oh, yeah. And now everything seems so disposable. And, oh, we don't like the way Lance Dawson's doing something. Great. Bring in Rick or, or Andrew. Yeah, right. You don't right. get that that longevity or a chance to develop relationships with people. So to your point, I don't know. Can it happen again? Or was it a little bit of lightning in a bottle? It, was, it really was a beautiful time to create television, music television. You know, we I, I I I count my lucky stars every day to have been given uh, that time at Much Music, the time at ET Canada, um, because thousands thousands of us Canadians wanted those gigs. I'm not gonna right. lie, like everybody wanted them. Everybody and their dog. Wanted oh yeah. Them. <laughs> so I count my blessings. Like I'm so fortunate that I was able to be been given that opportunity, and then. I was so grateful that they gave me the time to mature and blossom and become that DJ um, and then become that ET Canada host. Uh, yeah, man, I, they, those were such important years of my life. Like those were some of the best years of my life. And uh, you know, I'm going in different directions these days. I'm still quite busy, but 
but those were just magical times back then. And uh, I'm all about nostalgia, man. I love going back and, and, and looking <laughs> back at how simple things were. Like you look at half those interviews, most of those interviews, and nobody has a cell phone. No one's taking pictures or video. Everyone's so engaged in the moment. You know, right. they're there with that artist, singing along with that artist, you know. And as VJs, we were just that that platform to help give the the fans of these artists their voice too, because they got to ask them questions all the time when it came to I and I's or live at Much's or Much on Demand. It's like we wanted to bring the fan of that band and that artist right there with us because we were fans ourselves. Right. I, your point about the cell phones is, is well taken too. Oh, Everybody man. was engaged. They're in the moment. Oh. Uh, okay. So you alluded to, so what does a day in Rick Campanelli's life look like? What are you doing nowadays? Cause you know, our nine listeners need to know what's going on. <laughs> no, I'm sure you guys are doing way better than that. Come on. You, you guys are good at this. Um, I'm being I, self-deprecating. Uh, it's 12. I'm sorry. I, I was doing morning radio up until January. And, um, and I really enjoyed that because it brought yeah. me back to my roots of life stuff talking music you know i was but you know it took a toll on my body and getting up at 3 30 every morning that is and, rough and becoming a I, I turned into a zombie when i got home because i was so exhausted and i would take my afternoon naps on the couch and then when when, when my kids would come home from school i felt like i wasn't spending the quality time with them or my wife because i was always so exhausted but um that came to an end in january unfortunately uh, but it lasted 13 months, which I'm pretty proud of. Uh, my first cool. morning radio gig only lasted seven months uh, at the Edge in Toronto. So so at Z1035, it lasted wow. 13 months. But I'm doing a lot of like, I still do a lot of hosting live events uh, as an MC. Uh, I'm doing a lot of social media brand partnerships. One, one of my big clients is an, an online wagering site who were focusing more and more in on entertainment stuff these days. So that's right up my alley, which is, which is cool. And I love sports as well. So it's a perfect fit. Yeah. There's always going to be something like, I think you guys have also inspired me too. like, I'm, I'm, I'm working on a podcast. I, you know, I've been considering this one for many years and, and am I, am I too late to the party? Probably I am. Never, never. But, but it's, we all no, have different all, views and perspectives and opinions on things. So I think I'm going to throw my hat in on that. The, the world Good. of podcasting. So I, I got a lot on the go. Young family, you know, I'm, I'm still, my, my, my number one gig is, is, is obviously a parent. Uh, sure. I'll do anything for my kids and my wife. I'm, you know, that's, they're there first and foremost. They're the priority. Everything else is secondary, but um, they allowed me to take a month off and go to Quebec to film a reality competition show, which just aired the other night on CTV. It's called the Traders Canada, which is, which was a really cool experience. Uh, but there's always something. There's always something that we're working on. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome, Rick. Uh, so yeah. I'm I'm glad. I just, I can't thank you enough for joining us today. Oh. We could do this for like another hour. I, I, yeah. This has been we a could, lot of fun. Well, part but, two. Uh, part two. Yeah, is exactly. Part. Let me yeah, ask really. you one last question then. What yeah. are you guys hoping that people will take away from this documentary? It's not like people forgot what much music was all about. I think what Sean's main purpose is here to capture the magic that was much music. And as Canadians, we were so deeply invested in it. He's just trying, we're just taking a trip down memory lane. Uh, you know, that's what I like. I laughed, I cried, I learned things. And I think that's first and foremost, what he's trying to do here. And, um, you know, Sean's a lot younger than we are too, right? Like he's what, mid thirties, late thirties. So yeah. He was very young when, when all this was going on, but he still wanted to tell the story because he realized how crucial, how significant much music was for Canadians, young right. Canadians growing up back in the 80s and 90s. So it's just one big love fest, a big trip down memory lane, and uh, people will, will see that once they start screening it. And, and if they don't make it to the screenings across the country, I, I know Crave is picking uh, Sean's movie up and it'll be on Crave, streaming on Crave starting in December, I believe. Fantastic. Oh, that's great. Well, Rick, that's great. we have to thank you for being on the show. Um, Pleasure. Really appreciate your time. I guess that's Pleasure. been another episode of Backstage Lowdown. Yeah.